We are going to present to you the MyStars application for CZ2002 assignment. We are group 5 from lab group SS8. So the first thing to note is our team and this is a brief introduction. We were comprised of IQ Chen, Fu Chuan An, Nicholas Lau and myself Kapoor Rohan or just Rohan who will be presenting to you today. I want to cover a few essential implementations that we were able to do before I move on. The first thing to note is that we have a good design approach within our project. So we were able to use a model view control or an MVC design and we were able to implement certain principles such as uh, being able to have a single responsibility principle or an open close principle which means that for example if this if you look at our class diagram here we have a user interface class which all accesses admin manager student manager and course manager and we can see right here that um, the student manager class only handles certain student functions such as being able to change access period or getting students whereas the other functions such as sending an email and all of those blocks of code are given to system support so they're able to do and utilize a single responsibility principle very well and that was a brief implementation of our class diagram as well a much clearer version can be found within our zip file all right so now let's move on directly to the live demo that we want to present um, the first thing that we do here is we showcase to you uh, how we are going to go about this. So we clear the screen first and we launch the application. And when we launch the application, we find that we are presented with a menu with three options, student admin or to quit. So first we go to the admin and we log in as the admin as A01 and the password which is given within our report as well is snake tooth. Note that when I entered the password, it did not show you what password I'm entering on the console, which is a very good feature of our application. So the first thing we do is that we edit the student access period. These are the students that we have. So let's say for myself, Rohan Kapoor, I want to edit the access period so I can access the application right now. I go to U01. And we see that it shows you the student's current access time, which is 6.11 p.m., but right now it's 6.43. So let's go ahead and edit the student access to 6.44. So we enter 2020, month 25th November, and we go and enter 6.44 hours. Now it tells you here that it, the time must not be in the past, which is a very essential feature of our application because you cannot enter an access time that is in the past. So we enter 25th November again, and this time we enter to you um, 18.44. And here the access period change is success and this is where it shows email notification that is sent as well. So it says send e sending email and an email notification is sent. If I check my email which is rowan013 at ntu.edu.sg, it tells me that the access time has changed. I have just received this email at 6.44 pm as you can see right now. And that is the most brilliant part of our application as well, right? Being, being able to implement the notification system absolutely properly. So we go back and we log out, but before uh, we log out, we want to see how we can add a student. So for example, if I want to add a student, um, I can add uh, any particular person. I want to add Sam Shivastav. Student's nationality is Indian. The student is female. Their matrix number. Now, interestingly, if I enter a matrix number that's already there, for example, U08, it gives me an error that says student already exists, so I have to enter a new metric number. In entering a student password, say for example, hello uh, u17 and in student email u17 at gmail.com. If I try gmail.com, it gives me an error. So I have to I have to enter an NTU email that is e.ntu.edu.sg and student school is SCSE and access time can be 25th November and now it's 645, so let's say it's 6. 46 right so that's awesome and the moment we do that the moment we add the access time new student added we see the entire student list that is then printed so we log out from the admin and we log into student we log into sam shivastava hello u17 again the password is not shown and it says here that it's not your access time because it's not well it's not 646 yet so we wait for like about 20 seconds and then it will be the um, access time but until then, of course, we are able to log into uh, my account, which is Rohan01. And we see that it says, welcome Rohan Kapoor, it gives me a student menu. So I first, the first thing I do is I check print the courses that have already been registered. So it shows me an entire timetable of the courses that I have essentially registered so far. It tells me the number of AUs that I have registered as well. If I go on add course and I try to add a course, supposing 
object oriented programming c002 and i select index 20021 it tells me that index lessons have crashed and it shows me where the index lessons have crashed which is a very salient feature of our app in and of itself right so i have to go back and for example i add um, a new course say cz2007 now if i select 20071 uh, again, it shows me a clash. Interestingly enough, if I try to add a course that has already been registered, so if I try to add CZ2001, which is algorithms, it tells me you already have this course, choose another course, which is some beautiful error handling that we then do within uh, our project in and of itself, right? Which is, I think, rather interesting. So say, for example, um, we go back and we log out and we go to another student, uh, say, Eleanor Shellstrop. But before that, if I want to, as Rohan Kapoor, I want to add a course which is MS3001 statistics. The first thing I do is that I go and check the vacancies available by clicking on choice number four, MS3001. And I want this particular vacant, this particular index number, which has only one vacancy. Now I'm thinking whether or not I want to take this. But while I'm thinking, um, since we are not able to demonstrate on two devices, I'm going to show on this same device as well. While I'm thinking, my good friend, Eleanor Shellstrop, decides to take that course instead. So, Eleanor Shellstrop's password is hi, hi, hi. She goes to add course 3001 and she selects the index number 70063, which is the index number that I basically wanted. It adds the course, it writes to both the files, and if I check the course is registered, it increases our registered AUs, and this is the registered course that Eleanor Shellstrop now has. Now, if I log out and now try to log in from my account as Rohan, you can find here that the moment I go to add course and I go to MH3001 statistics, I can find here essentially that there are zero vacancies, but anyways, I want to enlist for this course. So it tells me that there are no more vacancies and that have been added to the waitlist. Suddenly, the person who had registered in the, in the end for this course, Eleanor Shellstrop, decides that she doesn't want uh, this course anymore. So she decides to drop the course and this is where we show you the drop course functionality as well, which is option number two. So it shows you a registered course and she selects MS3001 and it selects 70063. The moment she drops this vacancy, it says sending email. The reason it says sending email because it sends an email notification to me, to Rohan, the fact that I have been bumped up in my waitlist and can now access this particular course. So if I go to my check print courses registered, I can find that MH3001 is a course that has been added. If I go to my email, it tells me that there's a new added course index as well. So that's another functionality that exists within our app in and of itself. In, being, in terms of being able to change the index number of our course, which is option number five. So suppose I select option number five, I have all of these courses. I go to uh, CZ2001 and I change my index number from 20012 and it shows me what index numbers are there. I change it to 20011. If there's a clash, it will show me a clash here as well. But since there's no clash, it says that the index number has been added successfully. Now that the index number has been added, I want to try and swap with another student. So say, for example, I have a friend named Balachandra Prashanti. So we can uh, go to the student test file and we can find that Balachandra Prashanti is a uh, student U03 right here and her email is Bala0043 which we have access to uh, right now thanks to her. So we see that this is this is a student that I want to swap this particular uh, index with or I want to swap this index with so I enter U03 and it tells me that these are the courses that I have which course do I want to swap I want to select this course so 2001 and 20011 so CZ2001 and 2001 one now for example supposing i try to select 20012 it tells me immediately that you do not have this course slash index so you have to try again so and if i select another course for example cz2006 and i select for example uh, 20062 and bala does not bala chandra does not have this course the person i'm trying to swap with it again gives me an error saying u03 does not have this course therefore i'm supposed to try again so i go to 2001 and 20011 uh, the moment I do that, uh, okay, wait, I, I think there was a typo there. So 20011. Yep, so it tells me that U03 has the same index as you because she has the exact same index registered as me. And this is completely intentional. So the first thing that we do is that we go back and we change our index number again. So we change for CZ2001 from 2001. 
one two two zero zero one two and it says that your index has been successfully swapped now i want to swap with balachander who has two zero zero one one so i go to uh swap index number with another student i go to u03 and the moment i go to u03 i select 2001 2012 and it shows me the entire timetable what index i'm swapping from what index i'm swapping with and it tells you sending no email notification email notification sent if you go to balachandra prashanti's email which is balachandra prashanti we can see that there's an index swap request at this time which says that we have an index swap request please log in to accept or reject so we log out from Rohan and let's log into Balachandar's account. U03, the password is amazing X4 2020. The passwords are written in the file. The moment we log in, it shows us an immediate notification that says, Welcome Balachandar Prashanti. U01 would like to swap his or her 20012 with your 20011. You want to accept or reject. The moment she selects reject, for example, it says rejected swap, sending email. And in that moment, I receive an email and if I refresh my email right now it tells her that there's an email notification success and once I refresh my email yep and I received the email that says index swap has been rejected now, for example, since we are following a storyboard format, let's say Bala regrets her decision and Bala Chandar says that, no, I do want to change it with Rohan. So she selects my matrix number to change the index with. So she selects her course, then she selects 20011 and it says sending email, email notification sent, which means that now, right about now, I'm supposed to receive another email notification, which says that I have an index swap request. So if I log out, and I go to student, uh, I log into my account. It says here, welcome Rohan Kapoor, would you like to swap? And I click yes, I accept. So then the moment it is accepted and the index is swapped, uh, we actually have an email, it says email notification sent. And if I go to Balach on this email right now, it tells us that index swap has been accepted and your new index for the course is so and so. This is the best part of our application because we actually innovate quite a lot in being able to do this. Beyond this, we actually also have a ceiling cap on certain numbers of AU. So for example, if I try to add the, if, if, I, if I go to my courses that I have right now, so if I check print the courses that I have registered right now, it says that I have uh, 16 AUs basically registered. This, this number increases and decreases in accordance with whatever number of AUs we essentially have right so let's look at some of the admin features then let's log in back to admin and uh, we've already seen how we add a student but in terms of being able to add or update a course we want if we wish to add a course we select the course idscz2010 we select the course intro to ds and the school that teaches the course is SCSE. The number of AUs, I cannot enter minus one because it tells you to please enter valid course AU value. So I enter three. In an index creation, if I try to exit without creating an index for this course, um, and if say I have 10 indexes and I just enter any dummy values, um, then it essentially adds the index. But if I don't try to add an index, right? So this is where I can show you how we actually are able to update a course. The moment I try to update the course, and here we find CZ2010, you can actually update the school course, update index ID, update the index vacancy, and you can uh, create certain amounts of indexes as well. What we think is that the moment you are able to create an index 20012 and create the number of vacancy for this index is 10, the lecture time and date goes from 10.30 to 12 o'clock, for example. And we uh, the end time it tells you it should be after start time, so it gives you an error. So we 10.30 to 12 on Monday. And we see there are no tutorials and no labs. If I exit to the main menu, I can then also print the student list by index number or by course. So if I try to print the student list for MH3001 by index number 70063, we can find that um, I see that there are total 10 students in this index number. If I go again, 
MS3001 and 70064 this time we see that there are two students but the total students in the course then should be 12 now so I go 3001 and now the total number of students in this course is 12. With that uh, we come to the end of our presentation and being able to show you all of the features to the best of our extent. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.